Welcome back to Site Tech and Mountain Earthworks training videos. In this video, I want to show you how to do an infield design all by yourself from inside the seat of the machine. Um, this is a house footprint that's been laid out in front of me. I've got feathers all over out here, and they represent the actual corners and the center line of the footings. I've got a step, corners, ins and outs. What I want to do is infill design this and make a footing itself. It's not a basement dig, it's just an actual footing for a house, so I don't need to dig out the entire center, but I want to do it all from right here inside the machine. I'm already connected to my base, but I don't have a job site yet. What I want to do here is go to Job Setup, and the black box next to Job Setup, I'm going to start with a brand new one. I'm going to create one right here. I'm going to call this the uh, house footings. House footings. Go ahead and hit save. So I've created a project right here. I'm going to select it. Now I'm going to do their infield design right here. I can do depth and slope, but it won't save it as a design. So right now, house foot for or house footings infield design, measured data, and design right here. I don't have one, that's why I've got the red box. So I'm gonna create one. I am gonna do alignment and section, which I know a lot of you that have probably done alignment and section, you have you found that when you actually double back on yourself, um, it, it kind of folds in on itself. But this time I'm not doing a huge offset. I'm gonna just do a four foot wide trench, maybe four and a half feet wide. And it'll all be about the same elevation because I've got a step here that you can build into the infield design, or you can just basically, when you get to the step, vertically offset down. But it's all gonna be about one elevation. So we're gonna do alignment and section, and I'm gonna use the focus point of the machine. I'm actually gonna build it with the machine. What I'm gonna do is use the center of my bucket. So you gotta pay attention down here and make sure that's that focus, that red carrot is on the center. So now I've just got to basically go around and build my infield, actually recording the points. Some of these are pretty close together, that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and just start, and I'm not as worried about the elevation right off the bat. So right now I'm just gonna work my way around. And I gotta make sure that I do it in the right order. As you can see the paint dots out there, I've gotta make sure that I stay in that order or it's not. It's gonna basically draw a line string to the wrong one as I go. So as you can see, it's basically building this alignment as I record all these. It does not matter the angle of the machine. It doesn't matter if it's on a slope or what. All you need to focus on is, or make sure is that you are hitting the exact center of that bucket if that's where your red carrot's at. You can use the left tip or the right tip. That's not a problem. Just be aware of what, what you've got set up. And as you can see, I'm not worried about the elevation at this point. I'm gonna show you how to use a 100 elevation here in a minute, or whatever you've got as a benchmark to fix that. Just keep hitting the plus button here, make the alignment. Now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna actually hit my very first point that I shot the first time. It's like with the data collector, it's kind of like an auto close, if you will. 
but I'm going to go ahead and touch that to close that out. So now you can see I've got a really nice uh, foundation all the way out and around. If you go to the elevation screen, you'll see that it does have a little bit of ups and downs. It's just kind of wherever I had the bucket. But what I want to do is I'm going to select the point that I'm on right here, and you can see that it tells me what the elevation is, which is that 49.75 based off of the base corrections that I'm getting. So what I want to do is establish all this off of a 100, I'm going to call it, an elevation over here, but I'm going to have to set next to this elevation over here that I know is going to be my finished floor and basically kind of do a little bit of math. So I'm going to set down, I'm going to look at what the elevation is right there, I'm going to go back to my plan view and I'm going to hit record a point right there, which is going to tell me what the elevation of that point was right there if I click on it. So right there, knowing that that, can put that point right there, even though I didn't want that in my alignment, I can just back out of it. That one was 75.25. I want to be about four feet lower than that um, for frost out here. So what I'm going to do is go uh, 71.25. So I'm going to back back out of that last point that I did there. I'm going to go to elevation, and I'm going to come here, and I'm going to click on this very last point or first, first point in the order right here, and I'm going to change that to a 71.25. It enters, so it edits that one. Then I'm going to come all the way back to the very, very last point that I did in this alignment, and I'm going to pick that one. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to change that to a 71.25 and hit OK. Now you can see that I've got two on each end that are a little bit lower than everything in the middle. All I need to do to average all that out is hit this icon at the bottom that's with the line on it, and it goes ahead and bottoms everything out at 71.25. Boom, I've created my alignment. If I go back to plan view, And I've also got the elevation set at the right elevation for my, my, me. That was step one of three. Now all I got to do here is go to the next button. And I'm going to go to the second one. And on screen, I'm going to create how wide I want that trench. Now, if you remember, I was telling you that I wanted to be about two feet wide from the center of the actual line itself. So if I reach out there, what I need to do, knowing that that is zero on this alignment right here, I personally hit the little plus button to create a line, and I set that at two feet, and I hit OK. Now, you can take this and drag it, but sometimes it's, it's going to up and down on the elevation, so I just think it's cleaner to hit the button and hit two feet again. And what I've done there is I've created a center line. I've created two different points, so I've got a center of that four-foot wide surface that I made there, and this will make more sense on the next screen. I'm going to hit next and go to this screen, which is step three of three. But if I zoom down in, you can see that right now what that's doing is it's going to push the four feet of surface outside of that line. What I do is hit this little arrow right here to bring it over to the middle. So now I've established that the actual shots that I shot are going to be that blue line, and it's going to give me exactly what I need. I can put it in 3D, and I can roll it and look at it. It didn't double over on itself because I didn't offset over 20 or 30 feet. If you would have done that, even at zero elevation, that's where it gets a little tricky. But I basically just built myself a really beautiful little house footprint. And all I've been doing is sitting here in the, mach uh, the machine itself. So now I can name it. We'll just call it the uh, house footings. Go ahead and hit OK. If I like it and everything's good, I hit Apply. And it actually makes it. You're not dead in the water if you ever had to adjust that. You can hit these three buttons right here and actually go and edit it or delete it. But now that I like it, I'm going to go ahead and hit Apply. So I've got my project with my house footprint. And we can go ahead and load it and see what she looks like. And go ahead and go Start outside of the dashboard here and check our elevation here. So... There you go. I've got a perfectly flat surface all the way around.
and I've got to cut a four foot right there because I in intentionally changed the elevation when I was building the surface to where I wasn't worried about the elevations because it's hard to tell in this video, but this grade does go up and down. So every shot that I took with the bucket had a different elevation, and that's why I edited that. So if I set down right there, I've got a, four, a 330. The other thing you can do is in order to make sure that you're digging dead nuts in the middle of that trench without kind of eyeballing it in the 3D screen or eyeballing the surface itself, is you can go to the horizontal offset here, touch and hold, and on the screen right there, you can zoom down in and touch the center of that footing and leave that at zero. Don't actually offset it. And then you can have your light bars turned on on the top like I have right here. Got my light bars turned on so I can center, and I've got my red focus point in the middle, and my offline on my bottom ribbon here is set to show me exactly when I'm going to start digging all that. And then right here where I've got a step out in front of me, um, where I actually do need to step down two more feet, I didn't necessarily have to build that into the model itself. All I would do is vertically offset right here, just traditionally. I would go in and put a minus four foot. And the beauty of these offsets is then you can just toggle right back and forth in between that. So just by touching it, I can go to zero. And then by touching it again, I can drop four feet. So we are good to go to start digging. change this screen to where we can see the 3D a little bit better. But as I dig, now I can watch that center line and kind of keep an eye on exactly what my alignment is. Um, once you lose your paint marks, it's kind of nice to have a reference. <clears throat> Once you get down close, just do your traditional spot check. If you needed to have someone out there on a laser, obviously go for it, but I'm pretty close right there. I'm just going to make a couple final passes, kind of clean up the bottom of the trench a little bit. You could even have them bank pour it if you cut it the right width and you got the right size bucket on. So right there, dead nuts zero. Right there, just about a cut of five hundredths. And right there, just a, just a little bit. So hopefully this video helps uh, to show you guys out there in the field what your machines are capable of. I understand that what I just did right here may not be exactly what you're doing, but I know there's a lot of people digging footings. And it may not be a house footprint like I did here, but I dug footings for years. And uh, most of the time I was always handed a model, given a model, but if you have any a smaller business or a smaller project or anything you're digging and you just simply need to go out there and just kind of do this infill design freehand it i just want you to know all the functions that your earthworks machines have right here it's right in front of you that did not take me very long to build it now i can just go dig the rest of the day and not have to have a guy out here painting everything out all the time um it's just take your take your technology into your own hands and think outside the box. There's many different ways to do what I just did. If you watch any of my other videos, I've done this with just doing it with a data collector, but this one is 100% sitting in the machine recording what's out there. So hopefully these videos help and I appreciate you watching. Uh, thank you for watching from Site Tech Intermountain Earthworks training videos. Mm -hmm.